So everyone in this match starts brawling. Uh, the Dark Order is brawling. The Blackpool Combat Club is brawling. Somehow, in this huge mass of humanity getting a fight, Hangman is alone in the ring calling out the Blackpool Combat Club to uh, come fight him. They are prepared to take him out three on one. And what the announcers did not pick up on is that Hangman did not realize that behind him, Omega and the Bucks were getting in the ring to back him up. So when the Blackpool Combat Club backed down because they were outnumbered, Hangman was confused. And only at the very end, as he does a slow burn and turns and faces them right as the show goes to black, does he realize they were even there to have his back. But uh, there you go. Things are things are happening. You know, it's uh, most every wrestling show ends with something. Ideally. You know, that. well, there was that NXT show a few weeks ago where they had that uh, Carmelo Hayes-Tyler Bate main event. And it was just a good match. A guy with his with a finish, one. Yeah. and then it was over. And I kept waiting for something, but then they were just off the air. You know, there's 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 usually an angle or something in the show, but that is different from a cliffhanger. This was a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. The hangman was standing there, and the elite had his back. And obviously, these Blackpool bastards are exactly that. The Elite, Kenny Omega, they are baby faces. Hangman is a baby face, but he is not friends at this moment with the baby faces. But they had his back. So what is going to happen next week? What is what is going to happen with the Hangman and the Young Bucks? What is going to happen with the Blackpool Combat Club? How is everything going to play into this? And boy, those matches, Blackpool Combat Club against the Elite in six-man matches? Let me tell you something. And I think that might be all right. That'll probably be pretty good. So I like the cliffhanger. I like where this is going. Thought the main event was awesome. Yep. It was like they promised you a banger, and they not only gave it to you, but they gave you like pay per view time. They did not. They did not do like a fourteen minute, twelve minute commercial in the middle. I mean, we got a full, big, long, excellent match that was not just all flips and spots. I mean, it was one of those matches where. Every single thing they did, there was a there was a reason for it, and they played the storyline up with Jericho, and and Kenny Omega. They're going to be obviously having a match at some point, and the Hangman thing there at the end. And this was this was this was not a a perfect show, but it was a pretty damn good show. It was a very good show. With their, everything was watchable. Two matches were great, and a promo segment, while flawed, was still great. Sure. Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on this program. What kind of mustache did Vince McMahon have? Well, goddamn! You had questions about my mustache, you just had to ask! My God, Vince, is that you? Hell yeah, it's me! What are you doing to my chair, kid? Yeah, yeah no, listen, that's... I'm here, everybody, for a moment. You are. Because I know the only thing that anybody cares about is this stupid mustache story. I get a text. He's back, LOL. First, I was told he was snuck into the building. I started getting messages. Dude, he's got a mustache. You ever seen uh, uh, Gomez Adams from the Adams Family? That's what his mustache looked like. And he also had jet black hair. I got a sale to facilitate, so I'm out of here. Shave that thing. Oh my God. Wrestling Observer Live. I went to Rite Aid. Oh, no. And uh, they had, uh, I don't know, that. I think it was by L'Oreal or something like just, that. Just for men. This right. is apparently not to be used to color all of your hair black. Uh-huh. So I got home, and I just... I start running the water through my hair, and, like, I can't even get my fingers through my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I washed my hair like seven, eight times. Until it fell out? Finally, I was like, dude, I got to cut my hair off. This stuff is not coming out. <laughs> I thought I was so clever making fun of him and spoofing his mustache and dyeing my hair black and going in there looking like Vincent Price. And what happens in the end? I end up having to shave my head because of this guy. I think Vince watches this show every week. He goes into the archives. He watches the Retro Raw. He follows along with us. Okay. And he was watching this show, and he saw old Burt Reynolds. Man, he saw Ronnie Shear marking out for this guy, and he was like, that's the secret of mustache. And he went out and got a blonde with big boobs. I don't know about that one. Oh. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.